Hey, so I'm getting back to prototyping the uh, clapping machine, which is a kinetic sculpture I want to make, which plays Steve Reich's minimalist masterpiece clapping music. So uh, let's look at what we've got. Okay, this is the prototype as it stands. Um, the important thing to know is that this piece here, this is the main cam, and as it rotates, it's moving up and down uh, clapping mechanisms. And there's another one that's static, but this one needs to, in addition to rotating with this shaft, it needs to rotate one twelfth of a rotation relative to that shaft on a regular interval as part of the performance. So my first thought of doing that was this cylindrical cam here, um, which was a lot of fun to make and I think fairly gorgeous, but uh, it doesn't work that well for two reasons. Um, one, as it tries to push it up here, yeah, the, sl the slope is just too steep and it jams if there's any back pressure and there needs to be back pressure from a spring here. And the other big problem is that uh, because it's on opposites, this actually wants to roll down, quote, downhill um, whenever it jumps out of this detente and uh, that's bad. So I have to unfortunately give up on this idea. So this is what I've come up with as a replacement, these two sort of claw cams, I guess. Um, there will be two which will be spaced on either side, straddling the shaft you just saw, and as those rotate up, those will push the uh, the main cam back into the spring. Um, it's a weird shape. Most of this isn't actually critical. Um, this outer edge is what actually contacts, and honestly, only a small amount of it down here will actually contact. And it doesn't actually matter if that is a circle. It's easy to make circles, so that's what I'll do. Um, the important, the really important thing is that both of them match. Um, both of them have to be exactly the same. And likewise, the location of the shaft bore has to be the same for both of them, and the clocking of this keyway has to be the same on both of them. That's particularly critical. So I am, I'm obviously going to machine them both at once. Okay, so now we're on the mill. Um, I've glued on a template just so I could get the positioning right. And the important thing we want to do here is to establish this bore, the center of the outer circle and the center of the inner circle, all of which are in line. And there's this ghostly faint line that you probably can't see, but I can. Um, and so the first thing to do is I need to align that axis with the mill's axis. And I'm on my pivoting uh, mill vise. So I'm going to set up a, a scale here. And this doesn't have to be radically precise, obviously. Um, just close enough that everything's going to fit. Uh, so now that that's there, we can get a nice... Uh, oop, did I hit that? Rough positioning. And now uh, let's do some real alignment, just a second. Okay, I've got the indicator set up. Let's uh, dial this in. Okay, that is more than good enough for what I'm doing here. Lock this down. Uh, one last check. Oh yeah, perfectly good enough for this. Okay, uh, now we get those holes drilled. And again, this doesn't be, need to be super precise. In fact, it 
probably can't. So, um, I like to just put a center punch and, uh, you know, you can feel when this isn't flush with your fingernails pretty accurately. Like, this wasn't what I would do if it really, really mattered, but this is definitely more than it deserves or needs. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's our zero. Zero established. <laughs> Okay, got the uh, three quarter inch reamer in, which uh, is a bit of a procedure since it's way too long to be used inside the drill chuck. So I had to stick it in the collet directly, but uh, here we are ready to go. And there we go, one three quarter inch bore. Okay, now we're back on the drill chuck and we can move on to the uh, center of the outer circle, um, which will be mounted, the hole for that, I'll be mounting on a mandrel on the lathe, so I can just turn that outside curve. And then we need to mark the center of this inner circle, um, but that just needs to be, uh, just center drilled so we can find it later. Get that out of the way. Um, yeah, so here's the part. We need to move over 42 and a half millimeters for one center and 22 and a half for the next one. So um, I'm actually gonna go do this one first. So that is uh, 65 millimeters. Yay for real units. Okay, now we need to cut the keyways, which means using my arbor press here. Uh, basically, this is a brooch. You push it through, each of these teeth get higher and higher, and you do that to cut out uh, the keyway. It's guided with this, which you just slot in and align. And luckily, this is one of those cases where, again, it doesn't actually matter where it is relative to the other one. It's just that the two of them have to be exactly the same. And I'm now wondering if it wouldn't actually look nicer if it was facing... You can see that. So, if it's more facing up here towards the end. Because I want to put a set screw in there eventually. And you know what? That I think that looks nicer. It's not like any one of them is going to be e any easier or harder to set up to drill. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with this. And again, doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm not super great at this. Um, you use a lot of lube, of course, and also I recently realized, uh, make sure that the quill on your arbor press is nice and tight and not wobbling around. That caused me a lot of problems. Okay, let's see how this goes. Absolutely no promises. Okay, that feels good. And now we just push it through. 
Oh, what's going on? So if the problem is this wants to tip out back that way. And then that means it's cutting more and more down on the downsides on the lower side. So that's, uh, I've realized at least that that's something to be very much to be avoided if at all possible. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Okay, it's going a bit better now. I just have to take it out. Every now and then. Let's see here. Um, okay, that isn't so bad, but there's supposed to be a, a gap forming there uh, between the guide and the birch itself. And so I've just been whacking it back a bit. With a dead blow hammer. So it's going. This is pretty tough steel after all, so I'm actually surprised it's going this well. And of course, using spacers. Oh, great. Just two back. Uh, using spacers is important because I don't have a, one of those nice ratcheting arbor <laughs> press handles um, so I only have really good power to a small section of its stroke that's uh, the first one done and you can see how much it's cut but uh, that's not actually full depth for a keyway so you have to do it twice and you put this little shim in on the back of the guide that pushes pushes the brooch forward so one down one to go lots more lube Ooh. okay time for a cheater There we go. It's actually pretty pretty how the, the chips curl up inside each of these little, I don't know, what do you call that? It's not a flute. I don't know, the wave trough. Oh yeah, there it goes. The tricky bit is here at the end where it wants to fall out down below. And of course you want to catch it because that's a moderately expensive hardened piece of steel it wants to shatter. Okay. Yeah, I failed to catch that one. But the rumor didn't shatter. Yay. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, what we got here? Remove the guide and the shim. There we go. It's, uh, yeah, it's actually not bad. A little bit, yeah, some tooling marks on the inside, but not bad for uh, going through a full inch of chromoly. Yeah, I'll definitely take that. Okay, time to get on the lathe. So to turn this, to get the outer curve turned, um, I need to mount it on a mandrel through this hole. I don't, uh, it turns out I actually have a mandrel like I thought I did. So I'm gonna quickly take this uh, three quarter inch stock, turn down the end of it to like an, the distance of like an inch and a half um, to half inch, thread that um, with a relief cut at the bottom so that, uh, actually no, that won't be necessary, never mind. Just thread that and then that can uh, turn right around.
Okay, here we are back on the lathe, mounted back up. Uh, time to turn this. So it should be from about there, all the way to about back there. So I'll push just uh, get a nice clean cut and then we'll see where we are. There's a line scribed on here, but you probably can't see it. And again, the exact diameter doesn't actually matter. Let's go slower than that. That's more vibration than I'd like. This is, of course, terribly off-center. Not much I could do about that. That's 300. that tool at insert It's not bad. Eh, it'll do. I'll, uh, before I break these apart in the end, I'll sand these down. It's actually not bad. I mean, it'll definitely do for the purpose. But yeah, good enough for now. Okay, that's where it stands after finishing up on the lathe. Did a bit of sanding. Um, it's a decent finish. Sanding anymore is... <laughs> Squirm Alley's hard. It doesn't sand easily. Um, I... I scribed in the circle of the inner curve, um, you know, using the, the center point that I made, just to give an idea. Um, so next step, we'll be putting this on the mill. First, cut this out with a hole saw. I have a three inch, 76 millimeter, and this is 90 millimeter, so we'll do that. And I'll use the boring head the rest of the way. But uh, first, I think it is time for lunch. Okay, back from lunch, filled with delicious Thai food. Let's get going. Again, just doing this by feel. More than good enough. Particularly if you use your fingernail. Really feel that interface pretty closely. There we go. Our new zero. And lock down the table. More importantly than setting the arrow. Because we aren't going to move for a while, quite a while. Okay. Now, my plan is to use hole saw. Um, can you see that? Why don't I? There. Um, here, use a hole saw. No reason to bother with the center drill bit, so I didn't bother switching one over. Um, yeah, this is 76, 76 millimeters, and I need 90, so it's the closest one I've got. So that'll get most of this away, um, and in the process, some of that material might be salvageable. It can go in the scrap bin, and then once I'm done with that, we can switch over to the boring head. 
<clears throat> okay, we're in reverse gear, that's good. Get the cool lever convenient. Okay. Slow that down. Okay, let's see how this goes. <coughs> Okay, kind of a pain, but it worked. Uh, time to reset with the boring head. Well, shoot, that is as far out as my boring head goes, and it's still mm, five millimeters or so short of where I want it to be. Now I can put a uh, boring bit in here horizontally, but then the base of this would be hitting the wood before it actually cut all the way through. So I am going to have to pull this all off and uh, do it directly on the bed of the table with toe clamps. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I can indicate off of the cut to get back in the center of that, that circle, uh, certainly accurately enough for what I need. So I'm gonna do that and then get back to you. Okay, this is what we've got now. Um, I went ahead and cut a hole out, clearance hole in the wood. I couldn't do that before because it was being clamped and it would just distort weirdly, I was afraid. But since I was taking off anyway to that, I also cut, cut off this little spur with the angle grinder, just that much less to, to uh, bore away. So get you mounted up here and uh, we'll see how this goes, fingers crossed. bad that wasn't bad at all um, I'm gonna do the the rest on auto bore so uh, let's drop the table down and set the bottom of the height the bottom of the quill travel I mean to be right at the bottom here that way I don't have to trust the uh, the stops I'm always afraid they're gonna shift a bit so I'd rather just when using the mill boring setting. See there. Now it's completely bottomed out. That can't shift around on me. So now I'll just raise this back up. There we go. Okay, this ended up taking way longer than I wanted it to. That chromoly, man, it, uh, particularly on an interrupted cut like this, it is not nice on uh, cheap <laughs> brazed carbide insert uh, boring bars. But uh, pretty much gotten to where I wanted one or two more cleaning passes to go and I think we're done.
Okay, I'm gonna call it there. That's a pretty good finish. Um, and basically every pass I take risks chipping what I think is the last of the boring bars I have that's hard enough to get in here. So uh, yeah, that's definitely good enough. It's a little bit shy of the line on this side. It looks like shifted a little bit during one of the repositions and it's pretty much right on the line on this side, I think. So that's, if none of it matters, but this matters at least a little bit more than anything else because that'll center it around the, uh, the mounting bore. So time to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so here's where we are. Looking pretty good. Um, last thing to do is round these over. Um, so layout fluid. I made this little plug from some from some scrap that I had that was cold world uh, three quarter inch, so it fits nicely in here. And so by placing that, I have a nice pivot point. Set some dividers. Now a compass that I've set a. Uh, the scribing tool in. Um, yeah, it looks like this got a little bit out of position. That is, I messed up. Uh, it's not quite the 20 millimeters that there should be there, but uh, just pull that in a little bit to get. To get that. And that'll uh, smooth all out once I uh, start. Well, first I'll cut off these corners. Uh, and then start uh, just by hand on the belt sander, taking that down to size. Okay, so um, finished cleaning up the ends. It's a uh, it's an okay job. Um, sorry, I didn't film any of it. Got kind of carried away. Ended up just sort of freehanding it on the belt sander, which yeah, I should have uh, put it on the mill. Put a uh, put a section of three quarter cold roll through here, and then you could put it in the vise and walk it around. Um, you know, that trick. I don't know why I didn't do it. Kind of annoyed with myself. But uh, at least for the prototype, this is fine. So now all that's left to do is drill the set screws. Now I will, uh, I'll send a drill this, but first I need to position it in the vise. And uh, honestly, I usually find this is good enough to just do it by eye on ones like this. For drilling set screws. As long as I have the reference of the drill there, it can get pretty accurate. Certainly, all that's required for something like this. That, uh, back looks really good right there. Teeny tiny little center drill. That feels good. I was about to say the hole's off center, but actually just this bulge is off center because I was hand grinding it down. Okay, I'm gonna put the tap follower in. Drop the table down. This is just 632 just because I have some 632 set screws on hand, and it, you know, fits in there reasonably well. Doesn't look out of place. If there's some formula for that, what the the correct one is, I've never, <laughs> I don't think I've ever looked in the machine use handbook to see if there is such a prescription. But if there is, and I'm not following it, I apologize to the gods of machining. May they minimize our run out. So I gotta say, it's these little things that just make me love having the mill so much. Just being able to tap a really nice, straight, well-centered hole. Compared to doing it, you know, on a drill press. I love it. 
Yep, yeah, that's tough stuff. Gotta take our time here. Glad I only have two of these to do. Like, being patient is usually pretty key to machining, but boy, it sure is when tapping. Like no other time. Okay. That looks good. And ah, still smooth. Sometimes I'll kick up enough of a burr, I'll hit it again with the countersink, but no, it feels good. Okay, let's do the other one. So since I'm putting those taps away, I just thought I'd show you. Um, a couple years ago, I decided to get a bit more serious about sorting all my tapping gear properly, and uh, I highly recommend it. Just being able to know where all the wrenches are and the tap follower and all the standard sizes. There's a couple miscellaneous in there, of course, but uh, there's always that. But having all the main ones labeled and easy to find, and this is where it gets a little bit decadent. I actually went to the expense of buying dedicated drills for all of the standard sizes that I use a lot. So now when I go to tap something, I just have to pull out the tap and the drill from the same drawer. I highly recommend it. Okay, and there they are. Um, still kind of bummed about how the, the rounded tops ended up, but again, of course, only the, these are the only surfaces that matter, and actually only like that much of each one of those. And just now that I have them, we can picture this better. So instead of this rotating cam here, take that off. Uh, you'll have to imagine it without the rollers there, but this will step in here. Um, and then as this rotates up, it'll push this, the plane cam, the plane wheel, just to keep it simpler out of the way. Um, so the next step, of course, will be to build up a rough frame uh, to mount these in this relationship, because before I just needed a single shaft and I could be floating in the air and test everything. Now I need, like, shafts in relationship to each other. So that'll be the next step. Um, there's probably some other projects I'm going to work on first, but uh, it's good to make progress on clopping machine. See everyone later.